Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'm joined today by Emily Peterson, a resident of the parkland across from the Wellington School that uh, is lacking some trees nowadays. Emily, thanks for joining us. You had an appointment with the select board last night. Can you tell us what happened? Yes, uh, I'm very pleased to report that um, funds that were raised through donations from area residents uh, in order to fund the replanting of trees in the park or you know, parcel of land across from the Wellington School was uh, successful uh, in, a, in being donated to the town. The select board accepted our donation. And so the program is moving forward in partnership with the DPW as well as uh, Mark Hansen, uh, an arborist working with um, Barrett Tree East and the Shade Tree Committee. We've all come together to make a plan for the field and arrange for the planting of the trees. And let's uh, locate the, this property in particular. It is not on the uh, school street side of the Wellington, but it is on the other side of the Wellington. Yes, it's on Orchard Street across from the entrance to the main uh, large parking lot. Has that land been used as a, as a park in, in uh, the past? Well, it's not necessarily designated as a park. I've heard it called Memorial Field, uh, as we discussed. Um, you know, there was a lore that there were trees planted there in memoriam to Belmontonians fallen in World War I. And um, it's mostly used by the neighborhood and the school. Uh, a lot of children play there, people walk there. Um, it, it's just a gorgeous open space. And it's a shame that the trees had to come down. Emily, is it only people who use uh, this field? You said that there are kids from the school that uh, use the field, walkers use the field. Uh, does it get other uses? Well, we have been lucky to observe a lot of wildlife uh, in the field. Um, you know, prior to the trees coming down, there were several hawks that were resident in the area. I even saw eagles one time. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of woodpeckers. The squirrels, well, the squirrels may have been responsible for the trees becoming weakened because they were all nesting inside the trunks. But, uh, you know, obviously the turkeys, there's a lot of wildlife that, that um, I think thrived under the, that tree canopy and I hope to bring that back. And one thing that I, I wanted to ask too, it, this isn't just a, a neighborhood gathering place or a, a gathering place for the kids at the Wellington. I, this is a town-wide resource. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a beautiful space and, um, you know, generates a connection of trees all the way through the underwood and and then through the high school. So if you think about, you know, a belt of, of you know, green and open space, um, a, the continuation of that is important uh, for wildlife and, and, you know, I think our, our urban landscape. There wasn't a, a particular reason for the trees to come down other than that they were reaching the end of their lives. That's my understanding. Yes, it was a safety hazard considering the amount of, of children in the area. There were several large branches that were cracked and in every wind event, such as today's wind, we would see large uh, branches coming down in the field and the tree warden felt that it was a safety hazard uh, to the residents. Tell us about the, the fundraising effort You that you uh, pursued. You weren't appointed to do this. You saw a need and you and you pursued uh, that need. Is that my understanding? Is my understanding correct? Yeah. So, you know, when they came down, it was February before COVID and I'd already been discussing getting the trees replaced through town channels with the tree warden, Tom Walsh. Uh, but unfortunately, the budget for trees uh, was cut when, uh, you know, COVID hit. And then this year, the, the tree planting budget also uh, does not have any money for 2021. And so if we wanna start getting the trees back in there and growing, we, we needed to find a way to do that. And this seemed the most expedient way forward. And I'm so excited that so many residents have come together uh, to donate. Um, 
you know, through small donations, we've been able to raise over $4,000 toward this, this effort. And how, how did you do that? Uh, I started a GoFundMe page and advertised it on the Belmont Facebook group. Uh, I emailed the, my fellow town meeting members, uh, you know, posted it to the Belmont list. So social media really helped. And, uh, you know, the, I, I think the neighborhood was really upset when the trees came down. And so there's a significant interest to have them replaced. Now, you're a town meeting member. Uh, it, did that play a role in, uh, in how you approached uh, uh, raising funds for these trees? Well, I, I wouldn't say, I, uh, I guess it gave me some familiarity with the way uh, the budgetary process happens in town and various avenues to pursue such as CPA funds, um, as well as knowing how to maybe reach out to the select board and feeling comfortable doing so. Um, you know, just being part of town meeting uh, gave me that confidence to get started. What can you afford to replace uh, given the, the funds that, uh, that you have raised? Well, so, you know, when you pick out the trees and actually buy them, they're sort of a range of prices and it won't be determined how much the trees cost until we actually go to the nursery and pick the specific trees that will be planted. And I am partnering with an arborist to make sure we get the best specimens and ones that will thrive in the, in the area, um, you know, based on the surroundings and the soil conditions. So uh, I, I sort of came up with a, a rough budget and we will be replacing at least eight trees, I believe we can do with these funds. And if there are excess funds left over, my intention is to donate those to the excess funds for additional trees to be planted in town. If people have an interest in contributing to uh, replacing these trees, what would they do? They can go to the GoFundMe page and, and donate as much as they feel comfortable doing so. And, and as I say in the page, any small amount counts. The majority of our donations have been under $50 and we've raised $4,000 towards the effort. Uh, so, you know, really exciting that, that the whole community has really come together to fund this. You talked about if there is any excess money and that's an open question at this point, uh, you would donate it to the town or, or you would devote it to replacing other trees in town. It, are there are there other places that seem to cry out? Uh, that may not be the right term, but <laughs> seem to need replacement trees. Well, the Underwood Park is has had significant large trees come down, and some of the uh, larger trees that are closer to the pool. It is my understanding that those are approaching end of life as well. So it would be really great to get some trees in place to start growing in that space before those end up being taken down. I know that when we all go to the pool, it's great to have some shade to sit in. So it'd be really nice to, to maybe add some trees there. I'd like you to uh, react to the notion that people are used to having these large mature trees that are elegant across from the Wellington and they're going to be replaced with uh, small trees. Uh, can you talk to us about your vision of, of the future and the, the need to be patient? <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, they're going to be small. Uh, but right now, it, the field is barren and just grass and, and old stumps. So uh, I, I'd say it's certainly going to look better, even if with small trees. Hopefully, uh, folks will respect the small trees, uh, and you know we have a plan for their care to make sure that they get established. And you know, I guess the other thing is the um, trees that were there before were all a single species mostly. They were all Norway maples, and so they sort of all died at the same time. Now I'm hoping that we can avoid that happening in you know many years from now when these new trees are mature by planting multiple different species that potentially could expire at different times. And you know, it, it points to a need in the town that we start proactively replacing aging trees. So instead of waiting for them all to die and then replacing them with young trees, 
We need to look at spaces that we have aging trees and plant new trees now so that when the aging ones come down, it's not just an empty space. And you talked about how you've uh, thought about the, a variety of species. Who in the town ha have you worked with or what, what was the process and what input did you receive? This, this isn't your decision making. No, that there's a I don't know process. anything about trees other than what I can read. Uh, I'm actually a chemist. Uh, so I, I um, although I do enjoy gardening a lot, um, well, the first uh, advice I sought was um, our tree warden, Tom Walsh, who's been with the town for many years, but is unfortunately actually retiring this year. So we're seeking a new tree warden. Um, and then after speaking with Tom, he recommended that I partner with the Shade Tree Committee, which has several professionals uh, on it. And they really helped me to um, look at uh, proposing several different varietals. And so we sort of came up with a plan and that helped us with the budget. And then after that, I'm meeting with an arborist later this week to actually go into the space so he can look around at the surrounding area, look at the soil, make sure that what we've chosen and where we ballpark want to place it makes sense. And then when, when we go to purchase the trees, we obviously have to make sure that the nursery has a good specimen for us to plant that will thrive there. And to, to conclude, the fundraising effort continues. It does, it does. So if you're passionate about trees in Belmont, uh, I am keeping a strict accounting of the funds and what will be spent and what will be left over. So as I said, if we go over the, the $5,000 goal, which we're almost at, then um, we will just use that towards more trees in our, in our town. And I'll be partnering with the Shade Tree Committee. That's great. Thanks for bringing us up to date. We've yeah. been speaking with Emily Peterson, a Belmont resident, a town meeting member from Precinct 1, who volunteered to help raise money to help replace the trees that have come down in the field across from the Wellington School. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.